Remember, we all start from a simple squamous epithelial tube. Everyone agree? So if I if I use one color to represent my simple squamous epithelium, there's a, sque a, a teased simple squamous epithelium, right? And we'll stretch it out, and then we'll draw. There's we'll make it a little thicker. Connect them. There's the basement membrane. Okay. Well, that's the structure of a capillary. Does everyone agree? And so capillaries can be sealed shut, right? Like in the brain. Remember that? Who's, what cells do blood brain bury? Good. I like that. Good response. And so what happens is the astrocyte has these, these wrappings that seal it tight. You ever see that, guys? The cellular wrappings that seal it tight. Blood brain barrier. Testes brain barrier. Does it make sense? Why the testes? I'm testes brain barrier. Testes blood barrier, I apologize. Because right, my testes are not here yet, right? So it's testes blood barrier. Why the testes? Because the cells I make are haploids, are they not? And you don't want all those haploid cells getting near my immune system, do you? Wait, I'm sorry, you don't want my immune system getting anywhere near my haploid cells, do you? No, because if you get to your haploid cells, it, does it look like you? Hmm, maybe half of the time. Maybe the other half not. So you destroy those sperm cells. You see, does that make sense? It does. Now, for women, it's different. Ladies, y'all are complicated, all right? And I, and I don't mean it in the emotional sense, right? Or the psychological sense. I mean it in the physiological sense, right? Because when you're born, when you're conceived, you got five million eggs. When you're born, they go from five million, right? To 500,000. And then when you hit puberty, they go from 500,000 to 500, that's it. And, it, and, and every single one of those cells are stuck in the sec, they, they're stuck in the first phase of meiosis to first phase of meiosis till you hit puberty. So those 500 eggs that you that you're born with are stuck in meiosis one, and they won't undergo meiosis two until you hit puberty, and that's one once a month. If you're normal, show me a female who's normal. Now, you get there's a shorter cycle, longer cycles, guys. You see what I mean? This is why female physiology is so complicated. And it taxes the system. The stress alone could induce autoimmune problems. Make sense? It does. Then you want to talk about pregnancy or at least trying to get pregnant? A whole bunch of stuff can go wrong. Yes? What about the women that are at least in the appropriate age for menopause but are somehow still capable of getting pregnant? Then they're not in menopause. They're in that process, but they're still releasing it. But like so, so that's where you get to like 480, like 500 eggs, viable eggs. You give or take, you know, a couple, a few. So there's still that chance. There's still a chance until you know. Is there a definitive age in women where there is absolutely no chance? Like, or is it every woman? I think by it's like 65, I believe. Yeah. So once they hit, like, once they hit 65, now you, I think there was a Janet Jackson just gave birth to a child, but I don't think that was her egg. You know, and if it was her egg. It was probably had it been taken out and it got fertilized and then it got turkey basted back in. All right? Because, yeah, that's what they use a turkey baster. It's stainless steel, but it's still a turkey baster. They, they fertilize the egg out in the, in the lab, right? And then they put it, they implant it into the, into the uterine wall when the hormone levels are just right. All right? Because you want the uterine wall growing out while the embryo is growing in. Make sense? <clears throat> Yeah, that's why you go to in vitro fertilization doctor. Right? But now you guys have a, a pretty simple idea of how of how this works, and, and we're not even there yet, right? But in those areas where we generate haploids, we really don't want any kind of cell being exposed to those generated cells, even though the ovaries are much different than testicles. Make sense? Yeah. Right? The ovaries are good. They got, they got that long haul job to do. Testes, I mean, we, you know... Once we hit puberty, we're, yeah, we're making sperm from there till the time we die. We can be 95, I can be 95 and father a child, right? I mean, as long as I can, you know, as long as I can stand to attention, right? Because you need to have an erection. Well, not necessarily, right? But for it to be done right, you have to have the erection. The erection has to be so that the penis can be inserted into the vagina, and the deposition of sperm has to be as far deep into the vagina as possible to increase the chances of, of and that's why, you know, when I, when I, I when two play. feet, when 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 two when two when two people who want a child look for help, you have to get into this with them. You have to ask them. Well, I mean, 
you know, this, that, and the other. And we'll get into that when we get into the reproductive stuff. But so it's, I guess that's it's, why they use a turkey baster because it's like super long. That's right. <laughs> as long as you can get it as, as far deep into the uterine wall. And you've got to go to the cervix. And in vitro fertilization, they actually have to open up the cervix to get that fertilized egg. And this is why a lot of times they'll do more than one egg, fertilized egg. So they'll have two or three fertilized eggs that they believe could be viable embryos. And then they'll they'll put them in and hope that one of the three would take. You get me? And that's where you get some cases you get all three take. And then, then you're, you know, I, mean, what happened? I can't imagine having three at once, man. One at a time. That's how men doesn't have that, you know, right? Well, that's a different story. So that has a lot to do with either erectile dysfunction again, because if you know if you can't, if 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 if, if the penis cannot achieve erection, and what does this have to do with the cardiovascular system? Well, again, guys, in certain areas, these blood vessels are designed to dilate and constrict. And for erection, it's, it's not a bone, right? Even though they call it a boner, right? It's not a bone. It's that blood flowing in is more than blood flowing out. You get me? And so what happens is, is that because more blood is flowing in and out, then the pressure rises because the volume doesn't change. <gasps> it takes us right back to heart, doesn't it? Because that's basically what we were talking about. Heart, pressure, right, right? So the vascular system plays the same role. For erection, it's kind of the same thing. You want more fluid rolling in than coming out, so then that way the penis becomes erect. And that's part of the autonomic response. You get me? Now we'll get more into that in the reproductive part. But the reason why I talk about this, guys, is because I want you to understand that if we're talking about a capillary, right? So we got blood brain barrier, testes brain barrier, um, the ovary, the liver. The liver doesn't have a tight astrocyte surrounding the capillary because the liver's got a whole bunch of proteins, large proteins, that it has to transport from the cell, outside of the cell, put it through its connective tissue and into the bloodstream. You get me, guys? Mm -hmm. So what's, what would you think I would do with the capillary? I would keep it sealed? Would I keep the capillary sealed? Or continuous? No. I make it discontinuous. Everybody see that? Now, we're talking about capillaries right now. I wrote up here heart and blood vessels. So, but that's okay because remember, we all started with capillary tube, a very simple capillary tube. And then it became, as we became more complex, the tube became more complex. As each organ became more complex, the tubes that fed that organ became more complex. Do you get me? And, in, and as the demand became greater, well, then, then the system was like, well, damn, man, you know what? This simple tube is just not going to work anymore. Do you get me? Do you get me? So, okay, fine. So capillaries can be consistent basement membrane and be continuous. A continuous basement membrane and nice and sealed shut. It can be discontinuous and it can have fenestrations in it, guys. Do you hear me? So the me basement membrane can actually be affected, but in some cases, you can have the cells stop abruptly and the basement membrane still be present. That's called fenestrations. Did everybody hear me? So you have a discon. You can have the me the basement membrane can be continuous. The basement membrane can be discontinuous, like in the liver. You got me? So like in, in the brain, and the testes, you've got a continuous membrane and then it's wrapped by cells, by the astrocytes to create the tightest seal that we could ever produce, which is called the blood brain barrier or the testes blood barrier. You got me guys? Then if you go to the liver and you look at the capillaries of the liver, you're gonna see something completely different where the basement membrane is not continuous. It's punched, it's missing holes in it. The basement membrane, but that's okay. Because these epithelial cells are so anchored to each other that they don't really care so much about the epithelium of the cardiovascular system and, and everything's kind of loose in there. That's why they, the liver has this spaces. There's connective tissue with fibroblasts, there's epithelial cells from the mesodermal cells that created the capillary tubes to service the liver. Um, and then you have the functional liver cells, the hepatocytes. See that? And, and this is how it's going to be, guys. Every organ is going to do this. You're going to have the, every organ is going to have the functional cells whose physiological purpose is, uh, and then you're going to have the fibroblast connected tissue cells making the ground substance that allows them to stick together. Make sense? And in some organs, it's a little bit of extracellular matrix, and some it's more. Okay. 
That's separate. That has to do with the tissue. But what we're talking about is the cardiovascular system. So the capillary can be one. The basement membrane of the capillary can be one. Continuous or discontinuous. So there's gaps. You got me? Now that would make sense. Discontinuous makes sense in the lymph. Because the liver's making albumin and prealbumin and all these different things, yeah? And at one point, isn't the liver the site of hematopoiesis? <laughs> so the, any thing that it would get exposed to make antibodies, those proteins, they gotta be secreted into bloodstream. You get me? They gotta leave, right? So they gotta leave the confines of the cell and go into the connective tissue of the liver and then be put into the bloodstream. So it would make sense. The blood vessel, the capillaries, that serve the, the liver would be, would have a basement membrane that is discontinuous, okay? Now, remember, the capillary is not just its basement membrane, it's the simple squamous epithelium, right? Well, the simple squamous epithelium can either be non-fenestrated, which means they're butt up against each other, the simple squamous cells are anchored so tight together, right? Or they're fenestrated, which means they created these kind of windows of opening. You find this in the kidney, in the glomerulus of the kidney, because the kidney is filtering. Okay? And so the you'll have you'll have this kind of discontinuous fenestration so you'll have you'll have not only will the basement membrane be disrupted but the simple squamous cells will be fenestrated in the in the kidneys glomerulus and there will be cells that surround it to aid in in blocking off those areas so they can aid in the filtration when we get there we get there it's called the glomerulus something special All right and then that right there is called the filtration membrane All right. Um, in the lung, the capillary is continuous, non-fenestrated, so the basement membrane of the alveoli are continuous and the simple squamous of the alveoli are non-fenestrated. So is the capillary. So when you put the two together, ah, that's the respiratory membrane. Everybody hear me? Okay? So blood-brain barrier, testes blood barrier, out, uh, respiratory membrane, all right? You guys see? Look at you look at the liver. Look at the capillaries in these different organs in your textbook, and you see I'm not lying to you guys. Mm -hmm. Even if you got to jump around, all right? Because for liver you got to go to GI. But just look at how the liver is designed. There's a space. There's fibroblasts. There's hepatocytes, and you got all this extracellular space. And and the capillaries that feed the liver, man, they're, the basement membrane of those capillaries is discontinuous, and the simple squamous is fenestrated. <laughs> Because man, we got a lot of stuff to do. We got to put a lot of stuff, and we got to take a lot of stuff out. You get me? Because remember, we're not just making our human and ah, we're done. We made this building. Now we're done. Uh -uh. We're always what? Bringing that building in, breaking it down, and making a new building. <laughs> Regularly. <laughs> this is why you need protein, guys. You got to eat protein to make protein. Okay. Or all, otherwise, all bets are off. Now that's the basic capillary. You got me? But when we decide that we are going to be more complex and that we need a heart and that we need blood vessels, then we have to decide, okay, blood vessels, are you going to be your pulmonary vessels or are you going to be systemic vessels? And then for pulmonary vessels, you're going to have a low pressure side and you're going to have a high pressure side. And in the systemic, same thing, you're going to have a low pressure side and a high pressure side. Well, what's the high pressure side of the systemic circulatory system? That's the arteries, guys, the aorta. Large elastic arteries. And then it goes down to smooth, um, sorry, um, and High resistance are 
arterioles. And those arterioles, they're high resistance. Why? Because the lumen, um, the thickness of the smooth muscle, the thickness of the smooth muscle wall in the blood vessel is greater than the radius of the lumen of the arterial lumen. <coughs> so this is the smooth muscle, uh, the thickness of the smooth muscle in the arterial wall. And then this is what we get. So we got, here's 120, here's 80 millimeters of mercury, guys. Systolic, diastolic pressure. And so we're always going from 80 to 120, 80 to 120, 80 to 120. When it comes out of the heart and into the aorta, it's at 120. And then what happens is the aorta will stretch because it received that 120. And then it'll stretch and as the pressure drops, it'll snap back because it's an elastic. This is the largest artery in the human body. It's coming right off of the left side of the heart. Okay? Yes. And it's elastic. It has elastic fibers in it. And it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of, of smooth muscle in the wall. It has it, but it's not the same as in the arterioles. In the arterioles, when you look at them, you, when you cross-section the arteria, you're going to see. So here's again, this is what we're talking about now. Because we're, not, we're no longer capillaries, we gotta do blood vessels and we gotta figure out are we high pressure or low pressure? Then we gotta talk about the arterial side versus the venous side. Everybody see that? This is the arterial side. So the arterial side, so this is arterial. Systemic arterials. They're carrying oxygenated blood away from the heart into the system. Everybody see that? Huh. All right, so the high pressure side here is also going to be arterial, but it's not carrying uh, oxygenated blood, it's carrying deoxygenated blood through the pulmonary trunk. Okay, mm -hmm. low pressure sides are still venous sides. This is the venous side. So your lungs have an arterial high pressure and then a low pressure venous side. The low pressure venous side, guys, is what's going to drain the lungs of oxygenated blood and carry it back to the left side heart. Okay? So it, it, the, the, the schematic works like this. Blood enters the right atria and enters into the right ventricle. Right ventricle ejects, goes out, sorry, goes out to pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk goes to left and right. Pulmonary arteries. They'll then spread out to their corresponding lung capillaries. On the left and right side. Okay? So they go to lung capillaries. So now we're in lung. Well, the lung does what? Oxygenate. So this is carrying what? Uh, Deoxygenated. Nutrient-rich blood. Why nutrient-rich, Professor P? Oh, because why? Because the inferior vena cava, which leads into the right atrium, the IVC, has a connection directly with liver. And liver has a connection with GI directly. 
So anything that GI absorbs goes to liver first, liver then puts it into the inferior vena cava, dumps it into the right atrium. Right ventricle then contracts, pushes blood out the pulmonary trunks, goes left to right pulmonary arteries, left to right pulmonary arteries, go to lung capillaries, and you get oxygenated. Everybody see that? Yes. Those lung capillaries are gonna get drained by veins. This is the high pressure side of the lungs, guys. This is the arterial side. The high pressure side is always the arterial side. It's the pulmonary trunk and the left and right pulmonary arteries, but they're carrying deoxygenated blood that's nutrient rich. Mm -hmm. The veins that drain the lungs, left and right lungs, they're gonna drain into um, the pulmonary left and right. So this, these guys, uh, yeah. so this one, this one. So this would be the right pulmonary vein, and this would be the left pulmonary vein. Okay, they'll drain back into the left atrium. And the left atrium will drain into the left ventricle. And the left ventricle will then kick out to the aorta. Everybody see that? And that's nutrient rich, oxygen rich blood. That's why it's red. Guys, you got me? When I bring this back from the aorta, you get systemic capillaries feeding GI, let's say, yeah? GI uses that oxygen up, uses those nutrients up, then absorbs new nutrients, pulls them into the liver. That's still deoxygenated blood, you got me? So it's gotta go back into what? Into veins and then into the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava, guys, you got me? Any questions? So now, now, do you understand, hey, this is complicated, right? We gotta have a high pressure side and a low pressure side. And sure enough, the high pressure side is gonna have to have at the end, somewhere at the end of the high pressure side, you're gonna have to have these high resistance vessels to generate that pressure. Because if it was a rigid tube and my aorta couldn't snap back and I did not have this, the thickness of the smooth muscle wall in the, in the artery, the arterial, being greater than the radius of the lumen, then what would happen is I wouldn't get the back pressure. Too much pressure, if, if at all possible, would flow through the capillary and blow the capillary out. Do you get me? So the arterial is designed to protect the capillary. And by doing this, now watch. So if I'm talking, if this isn't, again, we started with a capillary, embryologically, right? But if I want to become that high resistance arterial vessel, what did I say? I'm going to have to get large amounts of smooth muscle, so much smooth muscle around it. We make the lumen super small, right? Meaning we make the vessel super small, and then we put all the smooth muscle around it, right? So that it can be our high resistance vessels. So now when you look, that's not going to be discontinuous. That's going to be continuous. So the lining of all your arterial system. It, again, if you're not in capillaries and you're in any one of these bigger blood vessels that we're talking about, it's going to be continuous and non fenestrated You got me, guys? Because it knows that it's being wrapped and sealed with other stuff. So there's, there's an, an elastic, an internal elastic lamina, which will be the white strip there. Then there's going to be an external elastic lamina, another strip of white. And, and then this is going to be the tunica media. Everybody hear me? And the tunica media, guys, look at it. See the thickness? If you look at the thickness of the smooth muscle compared to the lumen of it, see how the, the thickness of the smooth muscle wall is larger than the lumen? That's the high resistance vessel. So how does that look like on this graph? Well, this is called the mean arterial pressure graph. And the mean arterial pressure graph is just that. It's, it's an average. Looks like that. In reality, because it's an average, then the real graph looks something like this. Everybody see that? With highs and lows, but we take the average. Make sense? 
And so what happens? Everybody see that when I'm out here, here's the heart. There's the aorta. So the aorta is pretty much trying to mimic what the heart generated. See? And as you go farther along, then you're going from, from the aorta to large arteries, right? And then to arterioles. Now, if you look at that, look at this, guys. Draw that line. And, and you see... Do you see this tremendous drop in pressure in the in the mean arterial pressure graph? See that big drop? This is a huge drop, man. This is like a free fall drop from Great Adventure. Anybody into rides that take your breath away? Make you feel like you're like you're almost on the edge of death? I love it, right? It's an amazing thing. I swear, man, if my knees were still together, I'd be jumping out planes regularly. There was this. It was a 10-story free fall in, in Great Adventure, New Jersey. You get up there and they strap you in, and it's like an elevator. You just drop 10 straight stories. And then at the end, it curves. <laughs> Super scary. But you imagine if you, if you can't stop, you go, you go right off the ride, right? You're off the rails. That was my big fear. We go off the rails. Because right? I, I there was this movie when I was a kid, it, it Roller Coaster Flies Off the Track. It was a movie that they had made. It's like running away a roller coaster or something like that. And the people on, everybody's on the roller coaster, and the roller coaster goes sliding off the track. like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> my, my biggest fear, my biggest nightmare. Because if I, I wouldn't be fair, fearful if I had a parachute, because if I had a parachute, I'd figure out how to save myself. You know, remember, I'm the guy who jumped off his motorcycle like a surfboard and bounced off the ground, right? To avoid going into the canal for fear that I was going to get eaten or maybe drowned with my bike in the canal in the middle of the night. Yeah. So. Well, I've got many stories. I, I should be dead, guys. It, this is, like, I should not be here. This I am a phenom. I'm an anomaly, a physical anomaly, right? I'm, a, I'm really a ghost. Um, I have more than nine lives, and I've used them all up. So, so don't be surprised if one day I just don't show up, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is quite amazing, all the stories that I have. My first story was I climbed on a tree, and the tree fell. I mean, the, the branch broke and I fell to the ground. I couldn't move. I was, you know, for a few minutes, I was powerless. And I cried. I cried, I cried, I cried. Mm -hmm. A couple minutes later, I heard the bell ring, got up, and walked away. I was in school when it happened. <laughs> that was my first big incident. Separate of almost drowning in a, uh, walking on ice on a river or a stream that was deep enough to, I was a little kid then. I was like four years old. It's all right. So here's the thing, guys. That huge drop is that free fall drop I was telling you about, right? That huge drop is because of this high resistance vessels, guys. Because of the way that we decided to make these arterioles. And all we did was take that simple capillary, hmm? call upon fibroblasts or mesenchymal cells. Yo, mesenchymal, mesenchymal. I know you got a lot of shit to do, yo. But we over here trying to architecture a cardiovascular system, man. Huh? And this has to be in an, an aorta. All right, so Ben, let's lay down the basic. Let's lay down the basics. Every, 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 every blood vessel has an internal and an external elastic lama. Did everybody hear me? Every blood vessel. I'm not talking capillary. Don't confuse capillary with blood vessel. Blood vessel has to do with venous 